Hello, 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 hello. You are most welcome to this episode of the Olish and Drive podcast. I'm so excited that you're joining us again today. Guess what? We're going to be having the Manifest Conference in the next couple of weeks. And last year's Manifest Conference was so phenomenal. The theme was Step Out of Shine. So in the next couple of weeks, in the next six to seven weeks, you're going to be hearing messages. You're going to be, the podcasts are going to be based on what was shared at last year's manifest conference which was themed step out and shine there are so many things that god is calling us to do which is really what the manifest conference is based on you know us just stepping out into that place in our lives whereby we can do all God is calling us to do and so I am bringing you these messages from the speakers from last year to remind you of why you need to step out of your comfort zone why you need to step out of shine so watch out each week for the next six to seven weeks we're going to be having the shine series and we're going to be sharing messages from step out and shine manifest conference 2022 I hope you enjoyed. Remember to share with somebody else as well. And if you have not registered for this year's Manifest Conference, which is themed Grace to Thrive, I definitely cannot wait to have you register and see you in the room. Have an awesome day. If we're expected to step out, and shine, you better be clear what you are stepping out with. You need to be sure that you are stepping out with something that is needed, that is required, and that will be appreciated. You need to be very clear that you are stepping out, you know, with something of value. You're stopping, you're stepping out to add value to people's life. And so the first question that I want to ask you this morning because it's morning you know here in Auckland why do you want to step out if you are not going to make a difference if you are not going to impact if you are not going to cause people's behavior to change why are you stepping out are you stepping out because you want to impress yourself are you stepping out because you want to make profit are you stepping out because you want to be famous but god has not called us to those things god has called us to step out and shine you know he has called us to step out and be disciples of all nations he has called us you know for transformation and i pray that you'll be blessed today um, as you listen in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, the Bible reference for this ministration today is taken from Psalm 45, verse 8. And that is taken from, from contemporary English version. It says, The sweet aroma of the spices, myrrh, alloys, and cassias covers your royal robes. Your you enjoy the music of apps in palaces decorated with ivory. I will take it again. Psalm 45 verse 8 says, The sweet aroma of the spices, myrrh, aloes, and cashier covers your royal robes. You enjoy the music of apps in palaces decorated with ivory. When Pastor Lola Bode, you know, gave me this topic, I was a little bit puzzled because I am known as the fragrance of influence. And I know that um, being gifted, you know, with that gift from God is a lifetime assignment. So when she now said, you know, come and speak to us on Serenade, I said, that is an additional responsibility, but I embrace it. And so I took my time, you know, to seek the face of God and also to conduct research, you know, for me to gain, you know, a very good understanding of what it takes to serenade your word, you know, with your fragrance. So why this topic? When we look at matching of scent and music, you know, it appears to be something natural. It appears to be something you know, that comes out of our intuition. But most of the time, that is not the case. You at least, you know, find, you know, those two components, 
coming together. But we are blessed because in this conference, you know, God is bringing the two together. God is bringing the melody and is bringing sweet odor. God is telling you that you're a good melody and it says that you're a sweet aroma and he wants you to put the two together and step out and shine to his glory. Amen. <laughs> so there's some similarities, you know, between fragrances and music. Music and, 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 and fragrances actually speak the same language. They are composed of notes. They are composed of harmonies. And you need to be skillful when you are balancing either music or the fragrance. So in other words, you can't just go out there. You can't just step out. You know, if you do not know, if you are not clear about your note, and we'll talk about that shortly. We're going to talk about harmony. Um, DDK spoke extensively about the importance of harmony. We're also going to be talk, talking about, you know, being skillful in balancing the notes. We will talk about the notes shortly, like um, I've rightly um, stated. So when we talk about um, perfume, I've talked, a fragrance is a smell. It is, it's, a, it's a pleasant smell. And most of the time, you know, fragrances are called perfume. It's different from an odor. And because when you talk about odor, it's a bad smell. And I know God won't be proud of you if you step out and emit <laughs> bad odor because people are going to perceive you. And so when people perceive you, are you going to be perceived as a sweet smelling aroma or are you going to be perceived as an odor? And it's your choice to make because God has chosen you already. He's placed the anointing on you already. But what are you doing with it? So well, when we talk about serenade, serenade in music, it's a musical composition or performance delivered in honor of someone or something. It is to play a piece, piece of music or sing for someone, especially for a woman while standing outside the house at night. I watched um, a documentary on Netflix called Love is Blind, and I enjoyed myself thoroughly. I remember a particular young one. He was always having his guitar, you know? I mean, that that's, that's like a platform where, it's like a dating platform, you know? And he fell in love with this person that, you know, he never saw. There was that emotional connection. And, you know, behind the words, he was always singing, you know, to this person that he fell in love with. And so, as a child of God, this is what God is expecting you to do when you step out as a sweet melody or as a sweet aroma. It has to be, to be pleasant. It has to be pleasant. It has to be calm. And you, it's a, it's, it's, it, it has to be in honor of the people that you are actually um, composing, that you've composed the song for. So why do you have to wear a perfume? People wear perfume because they like to boost their self-esteem, or maybe let, let me talk about myself. It makes me feel more desirable for others. It's a badge of individuality. It sets me apart from the crowd. Just like my fashion sense, my perfume speaks a lot about my personality, my message, and my identity. So if you are stepping out, you better step out in your identity, in your own identity. Let it be your serenade. Let it be your perfume. I cannot step out, you know, to be like Pastor Luola Body. That is going to be a synthetic you know, me, and I won't be able to fulfill the purpose of God. There are destinies, you know, connected to you, the call of God upon your, your life. So it is really important for you to show up as, as an authentic person. You need to be clear about your identity. 
you also need to be very clear about your message. I'm not talking about branding today, but you also need to be very clear about your personality because that has a lot to do with how you project your melody or how you project your um, fragrance. So there's so many um, similarities between music and scent, like I've said. You know, in music, we talk about low bass, um, low bass notes. In, um, in, 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 in fragrance, we have high top notes called harmonies. <laughs> so there's so many similarities. So when Pastor Lo Labode is asking you to go out in, into the world and serenade your word with your um, influence, with your fragrance, she knows what she's talking about. The music and, um, and fragrances are also connected. So we're talking about tone or chord to transport us to the land of music. Similar technology in word um, of perfume as well. We have talked about our chords. We've talked about so many things. And a scientist says that composing music was similar to producing a fragrance. So when we talk about music, we're talking about composition. If we are talking about fragrance, we are also talking about composition. So if you are thinking about composing your music and your, um, um, your fragrance, what do you want to be? in your fragrance, you know, for example, I've, I've written um, an article called creating your signature fragrance. So if you want to create your signature fragrance, what do you want it to be? What do you want it? What does it have, to, what, what do you want it to look like? So we're just going to, um, you know, Take a look at the composition of, you know, the fragrance. So when we talk about composition of the fragrance, we want to talk about the earth notes. So that is the, when you serenade, when you serenade, you go to the world, you know, you spray your, your fragrance. So the first thing that, the first, you know, aroma that comes out is the head note. We also have the middle note and we have the base note. So when we talk about the head note, we are talking about the first impression. And so when you talk about this particular note, it is expected to be sweet and to be sharp. If you want to relate that, you know, to human being, it means the first thing that you see. So let me liken that to your head. So when we come across you, the first thing that we're going to see, possibly your wig, possibly your glasses, possibly, you know, um, your tone of voice, your complexion, those are the first thing you know, that we come across. Those are the first things that we see. And that forms a huge impression, though it's the first impression. It impacts on what the relationship, future interaction or future relationship is going to look like. And so most of the time, for you to have that, you know, first impression, what does your physical feature, what does it look like? Your clothing, your accessory, what does it look like? Your nonverbal communication, your body language, because that, those speaks volume about you. And most of the time we want to say, well, our physical um, look or appearances should not matter. But I tell you, it matters. And you know that it matters. But that is not all that is about you. Most of the time, you know, we, 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 we put a lot of effort in how we look. We want to stand out. We want to smell good. We want people to notice the wig, you know, the current one that we're, we're putting on. That is very fine. But I want to tell you that the impression, because your fragrance is about impact, your fragrance is about an impression. The impression that you will create for appearing good will last only maybe for 15 minutes. And after that, you're, for, you're forgotten. So the next in line of the notes, if you want to create your signature fragrance, is the middle notes. And most of the time, you know, the impact of this lasts between 20 and 60 minutes. 
That is the art of the perfume. And it determines the more dominant aroma. So when you talk about the hearts, we know what that stands for. The heart, your heart, you know, is your soul. We will come to that, you know, later. Then we have the base note, you know, which is the foundation. The Bible says, as a man speaks, you know, in his heart, so is it. So what comes out of your, your mouth? What characters do you have? This is the foundation. And most of the time, it lasts longer. The first one, the head note, give, give way to, to the middle note. The middle note gives way, you know, to um, the base note. And I know that you've heard that first impression is the last impression. But when it comes to the fragrance world, what you smell like throughout the day matters. Not how you smell for the first 15 minutes. I'm sure somebody will like that. We know we always talk about first impression and your fragrance, your influence, your serenade is about that impression that you are creating. But it is not how you smell for the first five minutes. It is what you smell, you know, for the old time. So I'll say that when you are called to step out and shine, is talking about influence. So what does your fragrance, you know, say about you? What does it say about your, your, your smell? What purpose does it have in the world? And so what, what is influence? Influence is the, is the capacity to have an effect on the character development or behavior of someone or something or the effect of it. So the way you are showing up, Either you are showing up as the head, you bring your head out and we see it, or you are showing up, you know, as the middle note, you know, we can see your heart, your heart is transparent, you have a good heart, or you are showing up as the, as the base, which is the last impression that lasts long. How does that impact on the world that God has sent you out to? Remember, it says that we're not joking here. We're in serious business here. You are expected to go out there and make a difference. So what I would like us to do is, you know, maybe take one or two minutes. Just imagine that you are creating your own fragrance or you are creating your own melody in preparation to go into the world, in the preparation to step out and shine. So what will your fragrance look like? What would the composition, you know, look like? Is it going to be 10% of, of the head note? Is it going to be 10% of the middle note? Is it going to be 10% of the base note? But I tell you, the, the, the head note, you know, like I said, is the first impression. That's between maybe 10 to 20, um, you know, like millimeter. The middle one, you know, should be between 40 to 60. And so the best note is just one, you know, between one and 10. So I want you to create your own, to design your own serenade in preparation to step out and shine. Because the old world is waiting for your manifestation, but they're not waiting for the manifestation of a fragrance that is not skillfully balanced. So there are systems, you know, that, that has been put in place. There are strategies that have been put in place. And so if it says it has to be 10, 40, 10, 40, 10, and you decide, well, this is how I want, you know, my own fragrance to smell. I'm going to make the head note 60. I'll look good. I'll look presentable. I'll speak very well. My, my, skin, my skin tone is straight. And, and that is okay. But I've chosen, you know, that the middle note is just going to be 10. And this note is also going to be 20. I want to assure you that the old word may not accept you because that is not a skillfully balanced designed perfume. So the key word to creating a great smell is to have a balanced aroma. DDK talks about, you know, being in alignment. 
So when you see yourself, you are set to step out. Will you say your aroma is balanced? Or is it too much of your physical look? Unfortunately, that is what we do. I was watching um, a documentary last week, the beautiful woman from Zimbabwe. She's very influential. She said, when you talk about influence, you talk about the way we position ourselves now, especially, you know, the young ones. Take, for example, somebody's asking you to support them and you've decided to give them maybe a thousand dollars. They said, unfortunately, most of the girls now will think about what they're going to spend the money. It's going to be on their makeup. It's going to be on their wig. But how does that appeal to other people that will come across you? Because you're not taking time to develop yourself. You're not taking time, your time, you know, to build yourself. You're not doing anything to improve yourself. You are not ready to invest yourself. You just want to show up and for people to be running after you. And we have seen in this little time, you know, that I've been here, I have seen that it does not work that way. So most of the time, you know, we hear about smell. And when I conducted my research, I actually discovered that there's a serenade perfume. <laughs> so when you step out to shine, what, is, what, what does that experience look like for, for the people out there? How would they experience you? Would they, like I said, would they experience you as somebody who is empty? somebody who is selfish, somebody who cares about himself only, who does not care about, you know, the people that are following her. So you also need to know that your serenade or your, your, your fragrance is telling a story. It has an impact on the people that come across you. It's also telling a story. So we look at Pastor Lola Body, what story is, is, is a music or a fragrance, you know, telling. And that is why we're here today. So what is what story is your influence? What story is your impact? What story is your in, your smell telling? Because you know that your story is, is also about your legacy. We're not going to be here forever. But even when you are long gone, what will your perfume say? What, what story be, be told, you know, about you? We know about Queen Elizabeth. There's so many stories you know, about that woman. That woman, she, she's gone now. There's so many positive ones. There's so many, you know, negative ones. But just the way she stepped out, and, it, you know, a lot of people are saying a lot of things about her. What do you think would be said about you? Because, huh? Your perfume is not about you. <laughs> it's how people experience you. I know you desire to smell good. Most of the time, you know, I go to the to the mall and taste, you know, you know, perfume out. Oh, I don't like this. I like this. Or sometimes, you know, people gave me, um, you know, some nice perfume. But in as much as I desire some perfume, I also need to think about the people, because, like I said, your perfume. Your, your, your smell, it's not only about that smell. It's about memory. It's about emotion. It's about connection. It's about positivity. So what would you say? How would you, how would you rate yourself in presenting yourself? Like I said, remember your, your fragrance can help you leave a lasting impression. And that is what we care about. We do not really care, you know, about, you know, impressing people just for that sake. And I know that we live in a world where everybody wants to be like the other person. Nobody wants to be their genuine self anymore. Nobody wants to be their authentic self anymore. But I would like to challenge you today that please stand out and be yourself. I would like to encourage you that you need to represent yourself in a distinct way because you are unique your your fragrance should be unique you are unique you are different you know to to to, to that neighbor you know that stands that lives very close to you 
So you need to represent yourself emotionally, memorably, and distinctively well. And are you ready to do that? Are you ready to do that? Because our influence, like I said, it's also about our legacy. So how are you touching other people's life with, the, with, with your sweet memory, with the affection that you have, and with the respect? Or is it the other way? And when you talk about leaving, you know, a kind of lasting impression, it has to do with the choices that we are making. So what are the choices that you are making today? You know, some of us, we want to be known worldwide. We want to smell nice. We want people, you know, to be drawn in, you know, into our brand. But we're not living up to expectation. We do not really have quality character. Remember, your fragrance is also about your character. How do you represent yourself? What, what the people that live close to you, even in your home, as a mother, as a wife, in, in, in that community, in the church, what do they have to say about you? And if you're ready to represent yourself very well, if you make the right choices, if you are intentional about serving your values with excellence, then your unique distinct signature will spread like wildfires. We remember the story of Mary when she anointed Jesus. Jesus made a proclamation on her. You know, your story will go global. Most of us wants, wants our story to go global. But what are you doing? What is the, What are the building blocks? What are the strategies that you are putting in place? And what does it look like? Is it just for you? Is it about your feeling? Is it just for the gains? Is it, you know, just for the profit? So these are the things that we need to talk about, you know, when we are thinking about, you know, our influence. Like I also mentioned, your smell is also about your legacy, you know, because your legacy is a proof of your powerful influence your feminine quality, and your personhood. You know, imagine you walk past somebody and they recognize that, oh, this is the person, you know, that has walked past. It's Pastor Lua Labode, it's Trudy, it's Adesayo. The best and most beautiful of the world cannot be seen or touched. They must be felt with hearts. I'll take that again the best and most beautiful of the world cannot be seen or touched. They must be felt with the heart. So we celebrate your beautiful wig. We celebrate your intelligence. We celebrate all that we can see physically. But your, your heart, you know, also matters. And like I said, you know, when you are composing or you are compounding your fragrance, remember that it has to be skillfully balanced. You can't have more of the head note than the heart note. You cannot have more of the bass note more than the heart note because the heart is actually the dominant factor of who you are or, or who you are, are representing. So you have created your serenade perfume and we are being encouraged to step out and shine. But before you go out there and shine, you really need to reflect on the notes that is showing up. Because if you do not do something about the notes that is showing up, your fragrance will not be accepted. Your fragrance will not be valued. If you are not present, presenting yourself in an excellent manner, you are not going to be. You won't last long. Let me just put it that way you will not last long. And I'm sure that is not what God has called us, you know, into. Presently, you know, in our civilized world, most of the time we like to think things true. And because we've got, we've, we've got the skills, we have the techniques, we have the ability. And so we don't really check with our hearts. We do everything with our heads. But we have seen it doesn't last. 
we have seen people who are leaving their legacy and who left their legacy because they walked from their hearts. But now we need to show up. We need to impress that person. It, about, it, it is about the competition. I was in the US, um, I think about two, three months ago, and um, I launched um, one of my books there. And one of the beautiful ladies that I met said, oh, here you need to be very careful because people actually steal your stuff and they, you know, they, they remove your name and they put their names on it. And I said, how do you present something that is not yours? How do you defend something that is not yours? How do you steal somebody's heart and put it on your own head and make it work? What impact will you have with that? What influence will you have with that? How would that? How does that smell to other people? Definitely, because it's synthetic, it's not you. It doesn't come from, from your heart. It's not going to have any long-lasting impression. And I pray that God will help us today in the mighty name of Jesus. So most of the time, you know, we want to depend on our intelligence. But have you heard this say, follow your heart? When you are confused, your friend can come to you and they can tell you, follow your heart. And I'm going to say a couple of things about your heart. Your heart is your soul. It's your inner compass. It is your true essence. It is that part of your, yourself that is all-knowing. It is all-powerful. It is creative. It is loving and it's limited, limitless. It is connected to your infinite part. That is your soul. Your soul, if you're living you know, in your heart, if you're connected in your heart, your soul cannot experience fear. It cannot experience anxiety. You can't have, you know, you can't se second guess yourself. You can't have any self-doubt. Your heart actually knows the path to your fullest expression. And when you connect with your heart and your soul, it brings you into alignment. When you connect with your inner compass, that, that is your heart and your soul, it brings you into alignment with your highest and most fully expressed potential. So you are being asked to bring your full presence into this moment. You are being asked to step out, you know, embodying your full presence. But you cannot embody your full presence. We cannot feel you. We can't experience you the way God has designed you to show up if you are not doing it from your heart. And unfortunately, you know, we are caught up with this. Working from our brain. And sometimes it's because of what we have experienced. Those are the things that are stopping us from working from our hearts. Some of us are heartbroken. Some of us have been disappointed. Take, for example, you know, most people, I wrote about that as well, my first, my first love or my first crush. I created that, you know, that there was this guy that I really liked when I was in high school and I was desperate to spend time with him. And I had to write a note, give it to my friend and ask my friend to please give this note, you know, to my crush. But unfortunately, when she gave, gave, it, gave the note to my crush, you know, she took the note, tore it into pieces and chopped it away. <laughs> and my heart was broken. And so many of us, you know, we have experienced that. We have been abused, we have been molested, we have been lied to. We have been neglected, you know, we have we have pains, we have wounds that we're covering up. We're covering, you know, those wounds up with our perfume. But you cannot be of God, you cannot be of use to this generation. If that is what you are still nursing. So we need to do something about your broken hearts. If you if if God is trusting you to go out there and impact on your world to make a difference, 
you need to do something about your heart. I've got my nephew who is a UFC champion. He's very, he's great. He's a, he's a great fighter. And he's making a lot of money, a lot of impact. But he keeps repeating that the way, the day he stops, you know, having the heart to fight, that is when he's going to stop, you know, fighting, regardless of how much he's making. But most of the time, we fail to realize that once your heart is not in a thing, it's not of use to anybody. You need to stop it. And so today, I would like to encourage each and every one of us to actually work on our hearts because once you work on your hearts, you will be able to fulfill the purpose of God for your life. You'll be able to step out and shine and bring glory to God. So a couple of things that I also want to remind us of for you you know, to serenade your word, you need, you know, to connect to God. You need to consult with your heart about the states that it is in. Like I said, if it's broken, you need to do something about it. And you need to connect with God because <laughs> he's the one that gave you, you know, that heart in the first instance. And if you surrender your heart to him, if you ask him to have a kind of surgery or heart transplant to heal you from your brokenness, definitely you can have a new beginning with him. And greater works shall you do if you allow your heart to align with God's heart. You also have authority to work in your field. You have the power. So today, I'll encourage you to give your heart to God because it's the one that can actually chart, you know, your path and give you the direction to where he has destined you to go. Thank you.